Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to learn an interesting subject: the diffusion of innovation theory. Before we start, let's review what we have learned last week. We talked about two forces that drive the development of innovation. On one hand, the development of new technology or technique. Pushes people to think of new application. For example, the internet and mobile technology push the development of video conferencing with our smartphone. On the other hand, our social cultural context shapes our needs, which pull innovation. Like this illustration, already in 1877. The artist imagined a phone call with video. I hope you remember these two forces working in different direction. Okay, I also asked you to study Bell's picture phone, an innovation for making video phone calls, released in 1964 but ended in 1978. Your homework was to find possible reasons for its failure. Now please share your ideas with the class. Good. Group A suggests that the high cost is the reason why picture phone was not popularized. Group B says that the quality of the video is poor. Group C argues that the bulky machine does not look user friendly. Um, group D finds that the picture phone is not like our multifunctional computers today.、Um, only for making video phone calls, people did not find it necessary to buy it. Great. As you may see already, we have an, a new issue here: the development of innovation may engage in different situations and in a very dynamic. Process. We wonder if we can suggest a theory to illustrate this dynamic process, and that's why we are going to learn the diffusion of innovation theory today. By learning this theory, we will also learn that there are different user types categorized by their attitudes toward innovation and. Uncover the factors that influence users' acceptance of an innovation. So, what is the diffusion of an innovation? Diffusion of innovation implies the process when a technological service or a device spreads out by individuals and societies. For example, let's do a survey. This course. Is organized on our Discord server. How many of you have heard Discord before joining this course? Raise your hand, please. Okay. How many of you have used Discord before joining this course? Okay. And how many of you have your own Discord server? Good.、Um, and how many of you have ever written a chatbot on Discord? Okay, good. We have a programmer here. As you can see, the amount decreases when a stage of usage is more advanced. Another survey.、Um, where did you know Discord the first time? Thank you.、Uh, by joining this class, you experience this new service or new technology based on Web3 technology. And you,、uh, where did you know ChatGPT the first time? Okay, you know it from your classmates. You can see that the diffusion of innovation or technology、uh, is related to our social experience, and that's where. The diffusion of innovation theory starts. In 1962,、uh, the sociologist Everett Rogers 
proposed his theory of diffusion of innovation. He started by explaining how an innovation would be accepted by a single person. First, um, this person is aware of and learns about the, the innovation. For example, uh, this beautiful like Thai take innovation uh, symbolically presented on our slides. When he first interacts with the innovation, he forms an initial and intuitive attitude, which we refer to as the persuasion phase. Then he would look for, info, uh, for information or orientation uh, to make his decision to give it a try. He then implements the innovation for his tasks or in his daily life. With, with this experience, he would finally confirm whether he will or will not accept this innovation. For example, here this guy uh, accepts uh, our youthful like high tech innovation. Then, through the power of social networks, other people also get aware of the innovation and would, uh, would use the innovation as well. When more and more people accept this innovation, uh, the innovation spreads out and becomes nothing new but part of our daily lives. Of course, not everyone likes innovation. When it comes to ChatGPT, for example, you may have heard comments uh, like this. I shall never use light technology. Uh, or the innovation is not humanistic, um, lacks human touch. I would, I would only use it for survival. Or I don't know whether the technology is good or evil. Let's see how the other people uh, use it. In these cases, we see different attitudes uh, to an innovation. This forms the second part of Rogers' diffusion of innovation theory. According to Rogers, there are five different types of users in our society. Innovators, early adopters, early majority, late majority, and laggards. The innovators are a small part of the population. Uh, they are pioneers who love new ideas and will take any risk to try them out. After the pioneer, uh, they are early adopters. They observe what the, what the innovators are doing and are also interest, in, interested in new ideas. They are a bigger group than the innovator and often they lead the mainstream. Then the early majority keeps itself updated. They are uh, one of the largest groups and uh, uh, tend to accept changes that caused by innovation. Next to the uh, early majority, we have the late majority. They basically follow what has been accepted by the society and avoid risks. Finally, there are laggards <coughs> in Chinese, uh, 落后者, who reject changes for different reasons. Uh, some just hold negative attitudes toward any change, and some reject innovation because of their ethical considerations. This interesting model illustrates the dynamics of innovation acceptance by, uh, by seeing uh, the acceptance of innovation as the socialization process. The two forces of cultural pull and technological push can also be identified through this model. A famous application of this model is the Kazem theory by James and Schrodinger in 1989. They tried to find, to, to explain why some seemingly favored innovation uh, stops spreading. For example, you may heard about the uh, PDA, 
or uh, mini disc or the car uh, DeLorean DMC-12. James and Schrodinger recognize uh, the caisson. Yeah. Um, the caisson are events um, that destroy the customer's trust, leading to the end of the ex expansion, such as uh, accidents, uh, political barriers, investment problems, or misleading information. For example, uh, the diffusion of autonomous driving, the car accidents reported on the news, or the investors in disappointing talks, all influence our trust in autonomous driving. So what else can influence our attitude of, uh, of accepting an innovation? Imagine you are my potential customers and I'm presenting you here this marvelous smart AI housekeeping robot. Will you buy it? So it is difficult to answer, right? But tell me what are in your considerations? Good, thank you for your answers. Your responses can be categorized in the following areas. So first, the visibility and the trialability. If I do not present this innovation or demonstrate the device, you don't know what it is or how it works. Second, usefulness and the benefit. Why do I need the housekeeping robot? Will it make my life easier? The reliability, safety, and data security. Who develops this device and run the service? Is it safe and trustworthy? Next, identity, aesthetics, and meaningfulness. I can also do my housekeeping by myself and take full control of my home. So why should I accept a robot be part of my family? Ecological issues. Does it consume excessive energy? Is it environment friendly? Uh, finally, policy and international trend. Is automation a trend? Um, will we have more automatic service? Will the company that maintain this device survive under this trend? As you can see, there are different factors um, from different perspectives that potentially influence our acceptance of, of an innovation. As designers for human experience and technology, our goal here is to clarify the essential factors influencing users' attitudes and avoid potential danger that causes the chasen, the chasen. Okay, let's review today's lesson uh, quickly. What is the uh, diffusion of innovation theory? Um, diffusion of innovation theory is a theory describing how an innovation is accepted by the society. By categorizing different user types according to their attitudes toward innovations. This model provides a framework to identify the factors influencing the attitudes of customers. There could be serious events um, which causes the chasms and stops the uh, diffusion of an innovation. Great, let's do a small practice and study the uh, case of autonomous driving. Please work with your team members and search for statistical data, uh, news or reports about autonomous car uh, in Taiwan. Discuss with your team members and tell us what are the essential factors that influence Taiwan users' acceptance of autonomous cars. And by following the five types of users, 
You remember the the innovators, early adopters, early majority, late majority, and laggards. Which type can represent the most current users of autonomous cars in Taiwan? Okay, let's see your result. Group A argues that safety is one of the most essential factors because 80% of people consider autonomous car or autonomous driving as not safe. Good. Group B argues that the current users of autonomous cars are early adopters. Yes, a population of 8% is not large but not too small either. I agree that we can see, uh, see this group of people as uh, early adopters. Good. Now you see when uh, managing a design innovation. The division of innovation theory provides inspiring frameworks to help us discuss the dynamics and factors influencing the user's acceptance. For next week, I would like you to work as a team and finish this task. This task is similar to our practice today. I want you to select an innovative AI application. Please collect information, especially statistical data, news, reports, or articles, and then uh, make a report. In this report, the following points should be discussed. First, what are the essential factors that influence users' acceptance of light application? Second, what is the potential danger that triggers the chasm and stops the socialization uh, of your selected AI uh, application? Third, <clears throat> what types are the current users? So. Uh, I hope you can find an interesting subject in this task and gain some interesting insights from your case study. We will uh, continue this subject next week uh, and see you.